Okay, hello and welcome to the Hope Hotspot. This is a, a little short podcast we put together just to uh, introduce to you guys who Sam is, uh, our Hightown community worker, and for him to tell you a little bit about the work that he does. So first of all, Sam, tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do. Uh, so my name is Sam and I've been in the Hightown, Hightown resident um, and I've been in the post of the Hightown community development worker role, which is quite a mouthful, since November 2017. Predecessor, I'm told, was brilliant. Uh, it's sitting across, me, across from me now. So the work I do is really to sort of act as maybe sometimes a catalyst or an in-between between lots of the different things that happen in Hightown already and to help facilitate ongoing projects, things like the High Town Festival that hopefully lots of people will have heard of, uh, which is an annual event, um, and then various other community events and projects that take place. Uh, and my role can differ in, in them, from ta- you know, depending on, on what the event is. Sometimes it's maybe supporting um, a group through publicising what they're doing. Sometimes it might actually be coordinating the, the event or project. Sometimes it might be um, offering support in terms of helping people get some funding or it, it, it can really vary because it's quite a responsive role and so it depends on really the sort of relationships within the community already so um, yeah so to help and run facilitate uh, community events and, and, and projects you know beyond just events so sometimes there might be like something like a, the uh, Colour of the Town mural project or the first phase of that I was involved in trying to coordinate that and bring local people together and connecting a local artist with the Dementia Cafe that works here and, and some other bits and pieces around that so yeah and so it's sort of like there's an open-ended aspect to the role really which is about like trying to work out where the energy is in high town and what is needed but also what is wanted and they're not always entirely the same things and then and then run with that and help facilitate that so like a, a current example would be um there's a group that i'm now involved in uh, who've set up a social enterprise to transform the disused pavilion in people's park into a community cafe um, and that is progressing which is exciting so my role in that is broadly to help facilitate that group come together and and really that's a lot of what my role is it's like <laughs> trying to do work to get myself out of the way and help others connect with other people. That's great. Um, so, you, I mean, you mentioned that there's quite a broad range of projects that you're involved with. Uh, can you just tell us in depth a little bit about two of them? So, first of all, Colour the Town. Colour the Town was, or is, it's actually in its second phase now and will look a little bit different. It's been taken over by a group of artists based at Little Red Creative Studios, following on really from from the work done initially. So that was, uh, it was a near neighbours funding bid put in by a few of us. It was actually... Um, uh, well, 16 year old at the time, a girl called Ruby, who put the proposals together and tried to find someone who could project manage that because she was leaving the country to create a series of murals uh, around Luton to celebrate what it means to live in Luton and, and what Luton is, what Luton means to people as a place which is home. So, what, what is it? What, what, what are people's memories? What are people's experiences and feelings about Luton? So, that had two different sort of streams to it. One was a competition that we ran for individuals to enter uh, with their own artwork uh, and we had picked three winners out of that and their artwork. It's taken a little longer to get the walls unfortunately than we wanted but one of those pieces of art is going up in Luton Town Football Club, another one hopefully in the mall uh, and the final one's already gone up at Diverse FM on a wall they've got and then there was also a group aspect to it so um, Amy Ricks from Little Red Creative Studios ran a couple of workshops here with uh, the Dementia Cafe and also with the Men's Ace Group uh, sort of doing a bit of a workshop to get people's ideas and do a little bit of art around what it what it what people's memories are of of loot and what people's experiences are of of having it as a place of home she went away and designed a piece and then came back and the uh, dementia group helped sort of paint the final thing so uh, it's looking really good at the moment unfortunately it's still sitting in a garage but hopefully in the next month or two it will go up on a wall it's yeah that bit's taken a bit longer than we had hoped Great, and hopefully people who are listening to this in the future will be able to, to bask in the glory of that artwork now up on the, on the wall somewhere. <laughs> um, and secondly, could you just tell us uh, about the High Town Festival, which is obviously a very large part of, uh, of what you do and your work in High Town. Obviously, I, I assume quite a few people from here at Hope Church have heard of it because we are quite involved with it. We have the, the service uh, every year, the joint service of churches. But it, if people don't, could you just give a bit of background about the High Town Festival and explain your involvement in that as well. Yeah, so the High Town Festival uh, ran for its sixth year this year, uh, and I believe has grown every year. And it, it really is a community festival, so the idea is that you know, lot, as many people as want to really can get involved in it in various ways and capacities. Uh, we have community stalls, which have historically only cost like £5, and then you get a spot and you can do 
sort of within reason what you like with it um run activities sell your wares um sell your arts and crafts sell products whatever whatever um it is that you're looking to do fundraise something like that really it's it's a great it's a really good event and like i could sort of call it an anchor event in high town for lots of what happens around it because it seems to like pin lots of the sort of social capital together so lots of groups working together i'll try and be quick with this but signpost volunteer the wi the women's institute offered cream teas on the day st matthew's school open up with lots of activities high town methodist church provides a stage and space for uh, the cream teas uh, we have lots of local bands that are involved the sos bus comes down there's lots of nhs and various other mental and physical well-being groups that come along so it's about really bringing sort of all the assets i suppose or lots of the assets that high town has together in a place which is like i got a fun feeling it's celebratory um and we really every year trying to build on and develop that so this coming year we've just actually been awarded funding to get some more sort of high quality children's rides and activities um and we're also going to try and work with some other local groups who maybe don't base themselves in high town but could be a part of it people like toco and um, maybe diverse fm so yeah that's exciting because there's a lot of scope in that and uh, the other thing to say on that as well is we've just got we also had funding for two young people to come on board as be part of the planning team and develop really give them license to develop some of their own projects within the high town festival so it's quite exciting because that can grow and develop like there's fringe events around it we had a heritage walk this year as part of it i suppose you know at its best it's showcasing everything i i'm a bit, you know there's sort of an interesting almost like philosophy of like festival what what a festival or carnival is and it for me it feels like it helps people in high town reimagine high town and and sort of gives a different feel to that space for for the year you know lots of people use high town road as a thoroughfare on their way to work or whatever and for that time it's like transformed and sort of strangely it means that we can change the way we we relate to one another and i think that like most people might identify with that in terms of you know if they've when the olympics are on or the world cup or something like the, there's sort of like a buzz around and the the space changes and the way we relate to each other changes and the festival is a way of like annually allowing that space to be reimagined and and perhaps our relationships change as well so that's a very exciting part of it and does like i say provides an anchor point out of that if you don't mind me just saying a bit about the living advent calendar uh the high town living advent calendar is a different way of doing that i suppose and probably less sort of centrally organized but is is a way of having so we're going to the plan is it's a bit of a feat but hopefully it'll be fine 24 different community events from the 1st to the 24th of december that will be open to different to or to everyone sorry to the community every day um and we'll have a whole range of different things going on so we've got like there'll be like a fair trade event a uh, an activism workshop we have a carols and christmas ales there's going to be like a roma christmas experience there'll be um hopefully like a storytelling evening and yeah struggling to remember the more heritage walk again and, and lots of other different things but really it's about trying to get people to engage with their local community and you know the more reading i do there's a lot of power in people engaging in their in in their locality so just so just lastly why are we talking about this why 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 is hope church are we talking about community work and the local area of high town and and just on top of that why is it important for the church to be engaged with these things well hope church is a church in high town um and i suppose some of the links go back historically when it was this role was originally part of like the name my foundation their philosophy which i agree with is that for community work to really take place effectively it has to be bedded into local communities and hope church is a brilliant you know it's not the only one but it's a very good one in high town very good community hub where we have hope church run their own events from here but they also facilitate and allow lots of other people to run a lot of stuff from here and with these groups in and out it provides like quite a good setting and a base to be plugged in you know this isn't the sort of work you could do from home very well because just being around people making connections like you know making relationships is a big part of what it is and so it can sometimes feel a bit intangible my role because it's like what have i done today oh, i've connected these people and i've started that and i've followed that you know but um hope church is a really good space for that to take place and yeah and then so the relationships sort of i suppose hopefully mutually beneficial and that hope church provide that but then also like my role can help connect hope church with other projects and bring other projects here like we look at sort of like the, the mural project is an example of that um and why should people be involved with it i think there's a, something very profound about churches being involved in in their locality and in the people around them and I wouldn't go as far as to say you know you should be able to walk to your local church but i feel like there is something important about like being embedded in the community in which you're around not least because probably on a sunday morning the parking situation will affect your neighbors so knowing your neighbors is probably a good start isn't it 
Yeah, and also like as a church that, you know, when I speak to people here, there's a real heart for the community. And, I d- and the thing I like about hope is that it doesn't, I don't feel like doing it to push an agenda like it feels like central to the theology of what you're doing is that you actually just believe that in caring for other people like Jesus is revealed and that feels like quite a powerful theology it's not it's not in order to necessarily you know great if people come to your church but it's not in order necessarily to do that and and so I feel like because of its generosity there's a real you know it feels like part of the ethos of the church to get involved and I also think you know if the other people didn't do stuff my role would be totally ineffective I'm sort of reminded of this like I have to work with people and if people don't want to do my, if my role is least effective when I'm coming up with an idea and then trying to get other people involved it's most effective when I'm working with people who want to do something or engage with something and then we sort of go from there um just just a quick question so if somebody was listening to this um they're not part of Hope Church they may not even be in Luton but they want to see their community uh impacted and their church able to facilitate that they might obviously they don't have access to a, a Sam Willis community worker but um what what would you say to them to to maybe get started in being able to connect with their community one of the first things I tried to do when I got into the role was just meet as many people as possible just to listen because I think there can be a real danger sometimes in community work and I find it myself of being like that's a great idea let's do that and then you find out there's three people already doing it two of them are doing it very well you know the other one is maybe just started out and and not trying to sort of reinvent the wheel and I think like collaboration is so powerful so spending time and not being afraid to probably you know it's, it's difficult and look my role relies upon funding so it's difficult to sometimes find funding to like just what you know network and relationship with the community but I suppose a big part of it has to, ongoing you know uh, the, of my ongoing role has to be part of that and anyone who wants to start doing it is just get to know people and get to know what's going on and you will get to know the assets of the community what makes it work and perhaps what you could do with that and also what the needs are you know and, and this is something I think has to be baked into a role like mine is that like it has to be responsive I have to be listening to the community and so I'm just trying to develop a next stage of that sort of community consultation to be like what is it people want and not trying to you know are there sort of current are there common threads and com- common streams about what people feel like is possible but also what people feel like they want um, and there's different models and ways of doing that but I, I feel like the first thing is like just pay attention to what's around you you know yeah great and just lastly how can people uh, find out more about stuff that's going on in high town and through the uh, website and social media links uh, so try and get these right way around. We have a Facebook page which is at Luton Hightown, and then the Twitter which is at Hightown Luton. It should you should be able to tell which is which because it will be the more active of the two uh, uh, handles. But um, and then the website is HightownLuton.com. So do stay tuned to those. Social media is more updated probably than the website, but I'm trying to work on the website a bit more as well. So um, yeah, or just drop me an email. My email is almost as bad as my job title in terms of length. So it's hightowncommunityworker at gmail.com. Uh, but do just get in touch because sometimes things are like burgeoning and just starting that maybe I haven't put on Facebook. And so one of the things I'm always looking for is people with capacity or ideas or energy. Um, and, you know, yeah, people with like minds doing that stuff can really make a lot happen, I believe. So, yeah. Well, thank you for talking to us today, Sam, and I hope you have a good rest of the day.